All right, YouTube, today we're going to be breaking down Shotzi's 13 spree against Toronto Ultra and really breaking down a lot of these plays that he made on this invasion control to help us win this map. It was an absolute like dominant performance by him. So I basically want to just take you through all the things he was doing in this first round during the entire spree and also what he did on the offense to help win that round as well. So this will just be a full breakdown, specifically looking at his arrow, but also talking about the general concepts of what was going on for both teams uh, throughout the entire map. So let's get right into it on the first defense here he's going to start off breaking towards the blue side with ag over here uh toronto actually gets a nade kill on brandon watching the cross from gas over here so it's really important now that we know that it's most likely an a-sided hit that uh ag and ant work together towards you know b and dvd over here to basically clear towards this cafe area because if they can get kills over here then we can converge onto the point uh with each other use some teamwork and actually clear people off of this a point so as you can see here they teamwork scrap the first guy towards b dom AG is going to go over towards Cafe and try and clear that while Ant kind of looks towards this backside of the point. Uh, as you can see here, you know, Envoy is towards this backside of the point. So, you know, Ant's both looking at uh, possibly getting a trade because AG just died in Cafe. So anyone that might be pushing out over here or anyone that might be, you know, hugging this side of the point uh, trying to cap this way. So he's basically watching uh, all of the angles that, you know, Ken can't watch on uh, uh, back gas over here. So you see he's going to see Envoy here in the deep corner on this side of the point and he's going to be able to pick him up uh, right as that happens you know Kleenex is going to back up because he realizes that he can't really work this anymore without anyone back on the point so you know and is first going to slide in here try and see if he can get from information on this guy cafe he actually backs up into the spot uh, where you see sometimes he plays in search like this little jump spot here so you actually see him in the x-ray vision my camera is actually blocking it but if you follow my arrow he, you can see him uh, actually doing this jump spot here and he's basically basically going to call out to Brandon here at the fire truck uh, to basically teamwork this guy back cafe because if they can clear cafe they can make sure that these guys aren't going to you know really have an aggressive push towards a side anymore and I'm basically just going to default going back towards the B side uh, because that's where they're going to spawn and you can see the spawners are already getting ahead towards uh, you know capping that gar more guaranteed point on invasion so as you can see here they're going to try and teamwork this uh, Brandon slides in but unfortunately you know Kleenex does get weak from Ant shooting at him but uh, he isn't able to get the kill off of it so that's an unfortunate though and the other thing here that happens is Scrap was actually AS and D and he actually kills Ch Kenny who was uh, trying to get info off of this point so Kenny gets killed over there and since Brandon dies here that means you know two guys are still towards ASD slash B Dom and because we won the break you know obviously that's not great that we go two down just like that uh, but this is a time where we can try and salvage this we know that they're probably going to hit B Dom or, or ASD so that's what you know AG and Ant are doing here AG is playing for the possible push through B Dom you see him give up blue this way and Ant is also you know playing outside a cafe in case those two guys were going to try and teamwork either through the cafe like this or through the A street and try and cross the point like this so he has the cross uh, by watching this angle to the point and also uh, you know to back cafe if, if they wanted to push through to like mannequin or something so uh, this is how they kind of salvaged this with just two guys since the two ARs uh, both went down so you see AG he gets a kill backs up you know he, he staggers their push somewhat because they're only you know two capped on point him getting a kill beat on uh, requires you know scrap to now play a little bit closer to his team to help them out you know really guarantee this point but look at this map control we have all the space towards this mid cut you know we could be hitting dvds if we wanted to we could be hitting out towards this treehouse if we wanted to as well so we're kind of taking all the different angles towards this hill to try and break on in and what we're going to try and do here is just you know hit our tag tools make sure that we're trying to converge from different areas of the map and as you see here that nade lands right into insight's face and since insight's weak from that he backs off a little bit also while that's happening ag is already converging from the mid cut that means there's one guy that's weak and there's another guy watching this mid cut so you know if ag can get this kill on the guy on point uh, that's watching the mid cut it's huge and that's exactly what happened AG gets the kill this guy is weak insight turns around he actually gets the kill on bread to get the trade but Brandon gets a different angle and it can actually see his feet you see the shots uh, go right there so you see that uh, insight does get traded out for those kills and now and who was second in line you know he was behind AG over in mid over here but you know once AG dies now he can refill this and he's gonna just play this area over here make sure that no one else is getting 
towards this point, you see Scrap, he had actually bumped off into DVD. So, you know, this is what Ant's looking for. He's looking for Scrap, this last guy alive. They know they've killed everyone else. Uh, so what he can do here is he can either try and look for this guy. Maybe he's broke inside or maybe he's playing off towards these pillars or something. But if he doesn't see them, what he can just do is, is maybe even just spawn kill and look towards his left. Uh, most of the time, there's going to be people off spawn just trying to refill this and get towards B and pretty much, you know, guarantee that cap. Like I was saying before, they've already gotten two ticks on it. You know, they've only lost six lives, so they can keep just refilling B like this. So as you can see, Ant hits the mid cut. He's trying to look for Scrap in this situation. He doesn't see Scrap, so he turns left, gets the Kleenex kill. And then Scrap, who was hiding in the DVD, he actually gets a timing where he gets underneath uh, Treehouse over here, is able to kill Brandon. So that's a really important situation because Scrap is still alive over here. So we need to basically clear him before we get to the point uh, because we know people are going to be off spawn. But also, this is a really important play that shots he makes because, you know, he gets that kill going mid cut, turning to his left, getting that kill. From that position, what he wants to do is he's going to go mid cut first to see if they had, you know, gone off A off their spawn just in case. But for the most part, what he can do here is he can take a timing to pinch them off of their spawn and just pinch, pinch this ice cream lane. And this is huge because he realizes when uh, he killed Kleenex. So he knows that he has the timing to actually, you know, make this play and make this pinch because he knows that Kleenex off spawn isn't going to be able to see him if he times it correctly. So he looks for it right away. As you see here, he's looking for it. Uh, you know, Kleenex doesn't go instantly towards it. So that gives, you know, Ant a little bit of timing to actually make this play. And he gets a great timing for it. He, he goes up towards this ice cream lane, finds insight for free, and now he can keep his positioning over here. What he wants to do is he wants to just trust his teammates, you know, number one, number three, and number four to clear these last two guys out and he can just worry about the spawn killers for the rest of anyone that might be trying to go over towards this B side. This is really important, you know, trust for him because he knows that he can guarantee kills off of this position. You know, being at fork or, you know, the bulldozer, whatever you want to call it, it's obviously, you know, not a forklift, but being over towards this position is so important because it's so hard to kill them. So he can really guarantee some kills in this situation and he needs to basically make sure that they just kill these guys off point and he has to trust them to do that because what what he's trying to do is just basically cut off any reinforcements so envoy actually was on point and you know kleenex gets this information he realized that to envoy so he's basically saying you know there's someone on the forklift i need this guy to get killed before i can advance to this position so he calls out to envoy envoy goes back towards and tries to look for ant but ant picks it up right away so this is like insane intuition from ant to actually turn for this because he knows it's a possibility that you know with the teamwork that toronto likes to use if they're you know calling out to each other really using teamwork that way he he knows that Kleenex saw him and he backs off and doesn't chow right away. So he's assuming that he called out to one of those guys that, you know, turn and look for him. So, uh, you know, Shotzi picks this up really good of kill out of Ant. And now he can just play Kleenex off this spawn. He gets some help from AG who had actually pushed this mid cut once they got this Envoy kill. So he's helping uh, Ant out right here in this situation. Now they can get these two guys down. But after these kills happen, they still know Scrap is back in our treehouse because he had just killed Brandon top blue over here. So, you know, they're going to try and back up for him and just try and at least trade him out this is what ag does right away unfortunately he dies to it and is now going to try and refill this position maybe kill him off the heady he sees him he's on a really good heady though and he does get weak so he's just going to play his life in this situation he needs to play his life because what he needs to do is just keep maintaining that pressure towards this construction side hopefully getting kills ice cream lane as well and you know just trying to guarantee that his teammates maybe get onto this point and try and salvage it while he just tries to play his life over here because you know he can't chow it when uh you know scratch on the eddy so he just has to play his life in this situation and uh, this is a good job by him he's just playing spawners here he sees envoy gets that kill and, you know scrap takes some shots he actually gets off this point you know technically probably just ends up capping this point if he stays on it but he's just so worried about ant in this position so he doesn't want to stay on the point and possibly get killed off of it so what he does is trying to take a little bit of space towards dvd because they still have 40 seconds left so they don't have to cap right away and he just needs to make sure that he tries to delay some reinforcements as well so it's this weird situation where both these guys that are left alive in the play you know ant and scrap they're both just trying to make sure that they're cutting off reinforcements for their team and you know playing that positioning that they already have pushed up for their team so you know as you see here they're not going for each other but they're actually just focused on the rest of the teams uh for both of the players so that's it's a really funny situation but you know it's really important for toronto's here to actually still maintain pressure towards this b side and that's what's happening here you know envoys goes alone here so he just has a one-on-one -on -one with 
Ann, and Anton obviously a better power position and knows that they could be coming through that lane, so it's just an easy kill for him. And you know, the rest of our guys are going to be filtering towards this B side because we know that they haven't guaranteed it yet. So if we can stop this point, it's a huge kill for us. But you know, the big thing over here is Insight, he took a route towards A side, and we're not really looking for it right away because we're assuming they're just going to keep banging B, but Insight takes the long route to try and actually, you know, try and disrupt us just a little bit. But the big thing, if we rewind it back, is we know that Scraps and DVD, based on the shots that he creates right over here, so he's going to shoot right now. So you see his arrow just highlighted for a little bit. That means he was shooting, so we know he's in DVD. Ken goes and takes the spacing towards this old P4. We also take spacing through uh, DVD, so we can just trap Scrap here. We know that he has to be in DVD, so we can trade him out. We know that that first guy in line for the team has been secured, so all we need to do is fill out the rest of the map. And, you know, from this timing, because Ant doesn't see any more people coming Ice Cream Lane, he's assuming that they're just going towards A side or going middle. So those are the only other two options because he sees Envoy, but he only sees one. So he assumes that more people aren't hitting this because they would have hit it already. So what he does is he takes this timing to you know just go and spawn kill Envoy once again. He knows that Envoy is going to spawn back Palace. It's a free kill for him. And now he just needs to trust his teammates once again to just kill the guys off of a point and through Cafe over here. I believe they see this guy Cafe, but what he has to just do is just trust the rest of the three guys to get the people off of a point, make sure that distraction is gone, and he can just keep slaying spawners. And the biggest thing there is... Since he killed Envoy in that situation with that spawn kill, he now has streaks. So big streaks going into you know, a possible offense, a possible defense, you know, that we might have to secure. So, you know, getting streaks is always beneficial. Uh, and what he does here is he sees that Scrap also died because we had killed him DVD. Now he's gonna spawn to kill Scrap and Envoy. So, you know, Envoy died in the spawn kill. He now takes a really interesting approach of just you know proning outside of Palace over here. He's taking an off angle in case Scrap went around this way. You know, in case he went over through the ice cream lane, he would have seen him. But Scrap wraps around, you know, because he has positioning towards the A side already with the rest of the team. And, and you know, shots he's able to read that with the position that he plays. He sees them in, in that angle right there. Kill Scrap. And this is a really big... Uh, play right here because you know number three and number four are looking for people towards this a side they see that kleenex was in cafe so you know and can take this timing he actually has one health in this situation but and could take this timing to possibly play for anyone that might be either crossing or looking at the cross and that's what kleenex is doing here and kleenex doesn't turn for him because he's assuming that you know these guys are going to teamwork ant and that ant is just going to keep playing spawn kills and i guess he's just not assuming that you know ant is going to go and try and play for him because he's you know just in their base just you know farming them so what he does is actually takes the initiative of actually helping them out himself and just going a street and, and getting this kill for for the rest of the guys and what he does there he gets the kill on kleenex now once again we know that there's still a guy on this a point but we can just teamwork him three and four can just easily you know teamwork this and he can keep this positioning uh you know towards his a street you know and is still being pushed up getting rewarded for his positioning and keeping that pressure on and you know that's the biggest thing for this defense if you can keep the pressure on the offense it is so hard to get out of your base if you can do it right because you know Ant's getting these kills but he's also changing his position he's not being an easy you know trade for them because they have to you know look for him after every single kill and he can be in any you know hundreds of positions technically so you know the way that they're playing this is that technically they're just going off of spawn and trying to kill him because they know that he's in their base uh, but they're not actually clearing him effectively because you know he just keeps changing his spots and it's really hard when you know Ant gets lost to actually find him so you know, he's dip, dodge, diving, whatever you want to call it. He's being a ninja in their base, and he's just playing this really, really well. So they, we teamwork these guys on the A point. We know everyone else is in front of us at this point because no one else is on the map. Everything is accounted for. And now we can get it into a trap setup where we have one guy in construction. So a lot of times you'll see in these trap setups, you'll have either a guy forklift or construction. You have maybe another guy on the B street walking that way. Maybe a guy mid tank or AS and D watching the mid court. And then one guy maybe at the Lamar Street over here watching deep and watching people come off spawn. So that's probably like the demon trap that you'll commonly see. And this is kind of the setup that we get into in this specific situation. Ants on an eight spree. He just, you know, sees Scrap midcourt here. He can just outstrafe him. And, you know, he's just staying alive with his life. He's constantly just regening, staying alive. That's one of the bigger things about the health regen in this new, you know, stage two patch. You know, the regen is so much quicker. So this really helps out Ant in this specific situation. And off this play, you know, he gets that kill midcourt. AG can now help 
out, you know, Kenny, who's playing B side alone. And what happens here is he can help out Ken because, you know, Ant already has the midcourt for himself. So he can have the whole midcourt himself. And now you can just double up, you know, the possible lane that they're most likely going to be going through to try and guarantee B because they only have 21 seconds left and they only have 10 lives left. We're up 10 live lead. So it's a really easy setup from for us at this point. We just have to double B side. You know, Ant, if someone dies, can refill the B side. And that's exactly what it does here. Perfect play. You know, AG gets a kill. Ken dies though. But what do you know? Ant is there for the refill. And now you can have two players keep watching this because they have to hit that lane to get to the B point. Only way that they stay alive. He gets another two kills and he stays alive. 11 spree. So 11 kill streak right off the bat of the entire map. Huge momentum swing because, you know, that's giving us streaks. That's a dominant, you know, defensive win for us. And now we can go into an offense and possibly even use that streak. But also, you know, he's just 11 and 0. So he's just frying right now. He's feeling it. And, you know, that confidence confidence boost is always great going into a round. So uh, I want to take you into specifically uh, the end of this round because this is uh, a big offensive win for us because obviously offense isn't you know the easiest on invasion control you probably know that from rank play you probably know that from just seeing the stats uh from the broadcast but it's it's really hard to win offenses sometimes on invasion it's just so defensively sided so any offensive win that you can get is just extra icing on the cake at this point he's now 16 and 4 he's you know continuing his performance and it's it's super impressive honestly but i want to take a look at this specific play because this is basically what wins us uh the round here so you know and it gets this information first. He gets up to top uh, P4 over here, old P4, top tree. So he sees from this position that someone who went towards the front door cafe. He gets a super late glimpse of Scrap actually pushing the front door here from this cross. And what he can do is call out to Ken right here that this guy is front door in cafe. So Ken is watching this. He's going to end up sliding front door cafe. Huge kill. So we get that information that guy's front door cafe. We can now trade him out. Kenny gets that kill. And now we can get some sort of pressure towards that base. You know, we got a kill towards cafe side. They have no one towards mannequin. So any kills cafe and, you know, B Dom over here are just huge kills for that offense. That's what we're able to do you know in this situation they have one guy on point one guy gas watching the cross and then one guy just off spawn so this is a really really important play by ant over here because what he does is he tries to take this timing through the front gas stores and what happens in this situation is number seven he actually looks at the cross for a second but i believe he's looking top blue i'm not 100 sure the only people that probably know that are toronto but i don't believe he actually sees ant go into the stores here and into gas so uh this is what happens here you know we got that kill towards cafe now there's spawning out because Ant has already pushed towards, you know, the spawn is now blocking it. And this is a really, really big kill out of Ant if he can get it towards gas. So he gets pushed up into gas. These guys, you know, triple teamwork the guy on point. So we know no one's on point anymore. Now we know there's probably one or two guys, either mannequin or gas. Ant is now behind Kleenex back gas. He gets this kill. And I don't know how he gets this kill on insight, but he just snaps onto him back gas. That literally just wins us the round in my opinion, because now the, the gas spawns are completely blocked. They're spawning back blue we have every kill towards this a side there's only seven seconds so one of our guys needs to get on point that's going to be brandon because and can keep blocking this and can keep getting pushed up towards gas and play anyone that might be you know spawning up and just instantly trying to hit this so that's what he's doing here he's just looking for people spawning up throwing nades, you know, Envoy gets killed here. He gets shots off, pulls out the Renetti, gets the wall bank kill. They're all spawning back blue. So that means, you know, number one, Kenny, who taking this route uh, through the mid cut can catch this guy off of cafe, you know, even, you know, teamwork this with, with AG if he needs to, but I believe he gets this first kill. He does. Now AG and Ken are going to be able to teamwork this other guy who's going to try and go for this trade. They see him. AG gets the trade, even though he kills Ken. But what do you know? Brandon gets this last kill towards Mannequin. He gets that last kill. We no three are down or actually four down in that situation because of the first kill on envoy that shots he had got now we can just instantly stack the point we know they're spawning in narnia we win the round so he finishes this off with a 19 and 4 first two rounds with a defense and offensive win and on invasion that that's insane uh, most impressive performance i've probably seen on control all year and we don't even have to use the cruise for it. So he, he keeps his cruise for it. And then we can end up winning uh, the entire game in the third round. But 
thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this little breakdown of what was going on in those first two rounds in the Invasion Control, specifically looking at Ant's plays during the streak and the plays that he made towards the end of that offense to help us go up 2-0 in that Invasion Control and really, you know, set the tone going to the third round. You know, it ends up helping us win the entire control and helps us win the entire series because we Nezlo Toronto, win the two searches, and obviously win that big game three control. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown and I'll see you guys in the next one.